Hello everyone, my name is Mridu Larkadi. The topic which I am going to cover in this video is SQL and PLSQL. The broad topic is database management systems. Uh, whenever you will complete watching this video, you will understand the difference between SQL and PLSQL. You will able to write the basic programs of PLSQL and also you will have a brief knowledge of commands of SQL and triggers. So the contents which I am going to cover in this video are displayed on the PPT and also the prerequisites for this video. So let's start with the SQL. SQL is a structured query language. It is a database com computer language designed for managing data in RDBMS. So the scope of the SQL includes the data query, updates, schema creation, modification and data access control. So Oracle was the first company to release a product that used the English based query language. SQL is basically a non-procedural language. Then the Oracle produced procedural version of SQL which is called as PLSQL. The one thing which you should aware of is SQL plus. So it is written as SQL star plus and pronounced as SQL plus. Uh, it is an oracle tool that recognizes and submits SQL statements to the oracle server for execution. There are different types of the statements uh, or we can say the statements or commands of SQL that we should know. The first is DDL that is data definition language which includes create, alter, drop, rename and truncate commands. Insert, update, delete and merge. These commands are included in DML that is data manipulation language. The third is DQL that is data query language in which select commands are included. Then commit, rollback and save points. These commands are included in transaction control language and DCL means data control language which includes grant and revoke the permissions. So this is the brief about types of the statements which are used in SQL. Then uh, disadvantages of SQL that is uh, the SQL does not have any procedural capabilities. So what are the different procedural features are uh, we can say predefined functions, local variables, global variables, parameter passing, modularity or programming libraries these are not included okay second disadvantage is programming techniques sql does not provide any kind of programming techniques such as uh, conditional checking or looping or branching or exception handling etc the third and important disadvantage of sql is sql statements are passed to oracle one at a time so each time sql statement is executed a call is made that call is given to engine's resources and this adds to the traffic on the network thereby decreasing speed of the data processing and especially this scenario especially happens in multi-user environment. The last disadvantage is no facility for programmed handling of errors that is while processing SQL sentences if an error occurs the Oracle engine displays its own error message. So SQL is not having any facility for handling the exceptions and errors. So basically SQL is the powerful tool but it's not fully structured programming language. So the solution is PLSQL. So what is PLSQL? PLSQL the PL itself says procedural language and SQL is we already know structure query language. So PLSQL is a strong combination. How strong combination is data manipulation power of SQL plus processing power of procedural language. And it allows programmers to instruct the compiler what to do through SQL and how to do through its procedural way. So basically the PLSQL is procedural language it's a oracle's procedural extension for sql plsql is the oracle's procedural language superset of structured query language 
it gives more control to programmers by the use of loops conditions object oriented concepts also we can create stored procedures and package to codify our business rules we can trigger database events to occur also we can add programming logic to the execution of sql commands so pl sql supports variables conditions loops and exceptions it directly proves one advantageous point is pl sql is a development tool and it's not only supports the sql data manipulation but also provides facilities of conditional checking looping etc one important advantage of pl sql is it sends entire block of statement to the oracle engine at one time in sql it was one line at a time now it's entire block so obviously the communication between program block and oracle engine reduces considerably the last but not the least point of advantage of pl sql is it also permits dealing with the errors and exceptions as required like uh, we can display user friendly messages when errors encounter in sql what was happening is um, the whatever exception or error used to get displayed on the uh, compiler was in the language of sql so sometimes user is unable to understand the meaning but in pl sql we can handle that exception by displaying user friendly messages then this is the pl sql block structure where there are keywords like declare begin and exception and end are used so uh, what is the declarative section is uh, this section can have all types of variables constants also we can have user defined exceptions in execution section after begin it can contain sql statements to manipulate the data in database and also it this section will have pl sql statements to manipulate the data in that particular block this part is important then in exception handling it specifies the actions to perform when errors or any abnormal condition arise and at the last you can observe after end keyword there is a semicolon given so uh, we must know some things which are necessary before starting the programs through pl sql the first point is about semicolon that is uh, you need to place a semicolon at the end of uh, sql statement or pl sql control statement then if you are block executed without any errors there is no error at all then the message that will get displayed is pl sql procedure successfully completed there are keywords like declare begin that are not followed by semicolon but end and all other sql statements require semicolon to terminate the statement next point is anonymous block anonymous blocks are unnamed blocks they are declared at the point in the application where they are to be executed and are passed to pl sql engine for execution at runtime okay so basically we need to Uh, remember that anonymous blocks are unnamed blocks the second point will be named blocks so named blocks are known as sub programs so they can accept the parameters they can be invoked we can declare them either as a procedure or a function now the point is when to use procedure when to function generally procedure is used to perform an action and functions are used to compute the value this is the basic difference generally it uh, procedure and function are used for particular things then is character set so character set i have already mentioned there ki what can be under character set then numeric literals whatever in green that is 36 and minus 14 are the examples of integers and wherever you can find the decimal points are the examples of reals then comments so in pl sql we can have single line comment by given given double hyphen and uh, if you want to uh, give the multi line comments then you need to use um, slash asterisk then whatever lines of comments you want and 
at the end you need to give star and then hash then the point is um, percent type so what is percent type is this concept is new to you is uh, percent type is an attribute provide it is an attribute it provides the data type of a variable or database column like uh, as you can see see the example credit number in bracket 7 comma 2 in next line i have written debit credit percent type that means variables declared using percent type are treated like those declared using a data type specifier so credit will have the same data type sorry the credit is having data type number and debit will have the same data type as credit that is number 7 comma 2 okay so if somebody is not aware about what is number in bracket 7 comma 2 is uh, the first number is called as precision and second number is called as scale that means um, in particular number you can have five digits before decimal and two digits after decimal okay then one more thing you must know before starting the programming is what is dc dbms underscore output dot put line so dbms underscore output is a package that enables you to send the message from stored procedure packages and triggers and put line is a procedure places a line in the buffer so see output you create using put line that is buffered and you cannot retrieve it until the plsql unit which from which it was buffered returns to its caller getting so basically this whole line will give you output on this screen through buffer then one more thing you should know is server output so to display messages to the user the server output should be on so what is server output it is a uh, SQL plus environment parameter that displays the information passed as a parameter to the put line procedure. Okay. Now, let's take a simple example of um, if statement. So, you can observe on the screen is under declare part, we have declared the num1 and num2 that uh, that are of data type number num1 is assigned 10 and num2 is assigned 20 in the begin section there will be executable part which says if the num1 is greater than num2 then you must display num1 is small and after that if section is ended by writing end if and obviously if num1 is smaller than num2 uh, there is no provision of uh, displaying anything so my program will end and see it will it will uh, print that i am not an if so this uh, this is a general program which is illustrating the use of if statement in plsql program then if you want to find the area and perimeter of circle uh, which uh, variables you will need is area perimeter radius and pi so, uh, in declare section, you must declare the four variables, whatever data type you want to provide like number, float or constant number, you can provide in front of the variable name, whatever execution you need to achieve, that is you need to calculate the area using pi r square and you need to calculate the perimeter using 2 pi r. So, you will write that executable part in the begin section and after execution or after calculation by uh, plsql compiler you will have dbms output dot put line sentence to print the area and perimeter calculated so you can observe there is a double vertical lines which is known as concatenation operator which is used to concatenate the strings okay so the output will be uh, area is equal to whatever calculated area is and perimeter is equal to whatever the calculated perimeter is 
one more example can be of using while loop so you can observe now the data type used is integer so i variable is assigned one in the begin part i have used the loop while so while i is less than or equal to 10 the loop will continuously print the value of i i have incremented the value of i so whenever the condition becomes false it will end the loop and then again it will end the plsql program now you'll ask in all the three programs we are uh, taking we are not taking any input from the user we are assigning values by our own so for taking input from the variable there is a method of using ampersand so variable name space data type and assignment operator assignment operator is made up of colon and then equal to and in front of it whatever you want to take input in whatever variable you need to write ampersand and that variable name so uh, you can observe the two examples on the screen right now uh, how you can take input for the variable a and for the variable b okay so one more example of strings is uh, you can use the data type varchar2 for the uh, strings so in bracket uh, the size of the varchar2 is given so str str1 str2 and v are four variables which can store the strings so in strings uh, first str1 it stored hello all str1 it stored with good day str2 is stored with and and v currently not having anything it is having only the empty set of uh, 100 size so in begin section what i have written is um, whatever my v the empty variable i have that should have the output of str concatenate with space then concatenate with str2 concatenate with space and then concatenate with str1 and then i have returned the output statement and in output statement i need to display only whatever is available now in v so what will be the output is str1 is hello all then space then str2 that is and and then space and then str1 that is good day so output will be hello all and good day right now we need to understand what are triggers so this was the base for understanding the triggers so basically understand the introductory part of triggers is a database triggers it stored plsql program unit associated with a specific database table or a view a code in the trigger defines the action the database needs to perform whenever some database manipulation now what are the database manipulations are suppose insert or delete or update that takes place unlike the stored procedure and functions which have to be called explicitly the database triggers are fires or executed or called implicitly whenever the table is affected by any of the above said dml operations so dml operations means what insert update or delete any data manipulation takes place okay so this database trigger is having three parts which three parts of database trigger are is first we can have a triggering event second part is a trigger constraint which is optional and third is trigger action so triggering event means what it can be an insert update delete statement or an instant startup the trigger fires automatically when any of these events occur. Second part I said is trigger constraint. It specifies the boolean, boolean expression that must be true for the trigger to fire. This condition is specified using the when clause. The third part is trigger action. It is a procedure that contains the code to be executed when the trigger fires. So this is the basic introduction of the trigger then then i have written their types so trigger is having types a row trigger a statement trigger or before after trigger 
so row itself says it fires once for each row affected it uses for each row clause they are useful if trigger action depends on the number of rows affected okay second is statement level trigger now statement trigger fire once but irrespective of the number of rows affected in the table so they are useful when triggers action does not depend on the number of rows affected getting then third is before after trigger so while defining the trigger we can specify whether to perform the trigger action that is execute trigger body before or after the triggering statement so before triggers means what before triggers run before the trigger statement after triggers they are run after the trigger statement and one more type is instead of triggers they provide way of modifying the views that cannot be modified directly using the dml statements so we are not into instead of triggers right now now let's take the example this is the more information about trigger is a trigger is a block of code that is executed automatically from the database statement it generally executed for dml statements such as insert update delete it resides in the database code and it fired automatically when the database code requires to insert update or delete it is also stored in the database at stored procedure and it does not involve any commit transaction rather it is the part of transaction you'll get to know it looking at the example so before example we must see the syntax so syntax itself says uh, create or replace trigger trigger name so if that trigger whatever name you will provide if it is already available then it will replace and if the trigger name is not already existing then it will create so the syntax uh, directly says create or replace then in brackets it is returned before or after what does it mean it mentions the execution time of the trigger that means before dml statement or after dml statement you need trigger to be executed okay then off column name on table name this is self explanatory then referencing so referencing old as new this line is used when you need to define the aliases then when trigger condition so this is for considering the trigger condition and after we have plsql block declare begin and end if the point which i left to explain is for each row for each row is used to indicate if the trigger is a row level trigger or a statement level trigger and trigger condition means it is used to indicate the condition for trigger execution okay so simple examples is uh, look at the example one create trigger star so star is what name of trigger okay so create or replace is not necessary if i write create trigger star it is fine before insert on employee so employee is the name of table so this trigger is activated when an insert statement is issued but before the new record is inserted as we have returned before insert it will trigger before the new record is inserted okay second look at the second example create trigger star after update on employee so whenever there will be a data manipulation like update only whenever there will be the word update the trigger will be triggered it will be activated when the update statement is issued and after the update is executed why because the word is the keyword is used is after update so it will be activated when update statement is issued but it will be triggered when update is executed as the word keyword is used after and the third example is look at the example create trigger amount check before update on account this directly means that amount check is a name of trigger this trigger should get activated before update on account so whenever there will be a update query first the trigger should get executed 
so there they have written for each row so for each row what should happen is return in begin that is executable part is return begin part so in this trigger what what is happening it will first check the amount if it is less than 0 then it will set the amount as 0 but if it is greater than 100 then it will set the amount as 100 so it is just to explain you the how to write the trigger okay so this is the example of trigger thank you so much